Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and it's repair time again and today I'm going to be repairing a Sony mini disc deck, a player recorder. I bought it off of eBay for use in the workshop and it's going to go over here on top of my audio stack. I've got my Denon amplifier, I've got my Sony CD player, I've got my Sky mini box and of course my development PC here a small screen and also my Studio Master C3X that I recently repaired. There'll be a link down below to that one. If you haven't seen that one, wow! There's a small graphic equaliser above it so you can see I quite like my audio and the mini disc deck is going to go up on top there so that I've got access to mini disc both for playing and recording. So let's get down onto the workbench and take a look at the unit. And here it is, it's a little bit scratched up, but it's not too bad. The rotary encoder is okay, as are all the buttons. The eject button, power button feels okay. So yeah, so let's put power into it and see what it does. Right, here we go, so I'll just switch it on off camera here. And I heard it click inside. And I'm not sure if you can hear that, but I can hear the mini disc mechanism what in a way I can hear the motor but I've got nothing on the display I've got a standby light is red but the standby button power buttons doing absolutely nothing and just continually I can hear it what in a way so let me just try inserting a mini disc and see if that changes anything No, it doesn't want to pull it in. Sounds like the mini disc mechanism stuck in a particular loop or something like that. But you get absolutely nothing on the display there. I think it's a VFD. No, nope, absolutely nothing. Eject button, not doing anything. Yep, I think I'll need to open it up and have a look inside. Right, let's take the lid off and take a look inside. And yes, typical 80s, 90s design. One large PCB power supply in the mechanism and there's not really too much to it. It's not like uh, it's fully loaded of all sorts of different PCBs. Of course you've still got the uh, front panel boards there. They look like through hole plated boards but this one here, this large board here looks like it's just single sided. Um, so I'm expecting to see all the processor and everything else on the other side. But certainly we've got the through hole stuff on this side. The power supply looks to be a linear design. We've got a transformer here. We've got the mains coming in at this side here. I'm not sure, is that a relay down there? I can't quite see. And it looks like we've got uh, part of the power supply is on the main board there. We've got a bunch of diodes there. That'll be a bridge rectifier, maybe a couple of them. So it looks like we've got the secondary of the transformer coming off of this connector here down onto the main board and it looks like we've got a regulator there, a 5 volt regulator and a couple of bulk caps. So first things first, before I remove any PCBs etc, I'm going to measure some power supplies. Let's see if we've got some uh, DC voltages in and around this board. And a closer look at this block diagram, you can see the main transformer here with all the uh, ridge rectifiers and the various regulators and that's switched by this relay here, you've got the power coming in here and that's for the standby mode. This transformer here is permanently powered as long as you've got power coming in the back and you can see that that's providing a 3.3 volt supply and a reset circuit for this system controller IC which is permanently powered. And this system controller IC activates the relay here. So it looks like on power up the system controller IC is going away off and doing some various checks. So it looks like I'm getting the standby signal to activate the relay because I'm getting all these supplies here. 
but I think the system controller IC is not finishing its self checks because something else is wrong and that's why we're getting nothing on the display and the standby light stays on on the front of the unit even though technically the relay is turned on so that the main transformer's got power. Okay and up here I should have the minus 12 volts unregulated so oh yeah minus 13 and a half and next to it the positive side there we go positive 12.75 so that's your plus or minus 12 unregulated and on D403 I should have the feed to the 3.3 volt regulator so 6.6 .6 volts unregulated that's fine and here we've got the 5.1 volt regulated from this 5 volt regulator here we've got 3.3 volt DC supply here and another one over here because there is two you've got the standby 3.3 volts and the main 3.3 volts and here we've got the minus 32 volts that's for the uh, display the VFD display minus 32 volts regulated so that's fine and I think that's it so I think the power supplies are okay Having a quick look through the service manual for this unit, there is actually a check mode, a test mode that you can put this into. What you do is you hold down the rotary encoder and the stop button and then apply power. So let's just do that now, if I can. And then release it. Wow, yes! We've got something on the display now. Not sure what you can do in test mode wow yes we can cycle through a whole load of stuff so I think we'll take a look at the mechanism now and let's see if anything's jammed up or a belt snapped or anything like that right so let's take a look inside this here it looks like there's a tab here that I can pull back and lift this up maybe yep yeah. oh. Oh, somewhat. Oh, well, there we go. There we go. Looks like we've got a bit of a belt. So, yes, yes. We've got two pulleys there, and it looks like that belt there snapped. Should be going round both of them by the looks of it. Wow. Okay. So I need to replace that, so let's see if I've got anything in stock that might fit there. So over the years I've built up quite a stock of bits and pieces. Various belts for various units. Including some cheap eBay belts here, that might be the trick. Oh wow, got a number of different diameters there. I wonder if that one will fit. Looks a little bit narrow. Not sure if I've got anything thicker. Let me try this one. Let me just offer it up alongside. No, that's too big. It's too long. Need something smaller. Well, I've ordered a belt the right size, but until then, just to test, I've got a number of small rubber bands, so so let me see if I can get one of them to fit and at least run the unit, test it temporarily. I'm not sure what size will fit. Try this white one. Well, that white one seems to fit it's a bit big, but it might just do the job. Let's test it out. Right, ready for a power up. No disc in a course. Let's just power it up. And yes, it's gone straight to power up. Standby light came on temporarily and I've now got no disc. That's looking good. But will it accept a disc? Yes! <laughs> Table of contents reading blank disc and yes it is a blank disc how about eject 
Yes! <laughs> okay, let me put in a disc that I know has got an MP3 in it. Or a song anyway. Here's one here. I know it's got one song in it. I can't remember which one it is. TOC reading. One track. Play. Yeah, we've got to hold the button in there. <laughs> and yes! It's working! It's playing the track there and I can see the disc is moving. That rubber band looks like it's doing its job. So let's stop. Eject. Perfect. Wow! I think I can put this unit back together and stick it on my audio stack and let's see if it actually works. Well, there it is up on the stack. Still got to change the belt when it comes in, but it's working. I've put in a proper mini disc, a Rod Stewart one. So if I just hit play, I've got the sound turned down on the amplifier uh, just to avoid any copyright strikes. But if I just hit uh, play, Maggie May is the first track and it's up and running. And the audio is absolutely perfect. It's working. Well, a couple of days later and the belt that I ordered is come in, so I'll fit that, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So thanks for watching, and remember you can always comment down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.